Hello, sweet friends. Welcome back today. I am so, so happy that you're here because we're going to introduce you to a woman named Jamie and she is part of our free spirit bundle in that she is our bundle blessing recipient. Our bundle blessing is something that we do once a year. We are a very small company. My goal and my heart is to be able to at minimum do one per quarter whenever a new bundle goes out. So with Free Spirit Bundle, you get a quarterly subscription February, May, August, November. So I would love to be able to do that bundle blessing every single quarter, but for now, we're grateful for our subscribers and that we're able to do one per year. Andy Stanley says it best in my opinion, do for one what you wish you could do for all. And that is really our heart at Free Spirit Bundle and I love all of our subscribers that partner with us. So. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking so that you can meet Jamie. I want you to hear her story. Okay, I know you're nosy rosy, so. <laughs> I'm Jamie Young. I have, well, I have five kids technically because I still claim my three stepchildren. Anytime that I don't, they're like, why? So um, I have a three-year-old Ayla, she's the youngest, eight-year-old Jada. And then I have 13 year old Mansoor, which he lives, uh, he doesn't live with me. Uh, and then I have 19 year old Maya who lives with me. And then I have 22 year old Gaia who, who doesn't live, she lives in Gainesville. Before, when we first got in here, you mentioned your version of home. Right. And kind of a home has never real has always been like a struggle for you mm -hmm. about like your thought process towards a home. So if you can tell me why it's been a struggle. Okay. Try not to cry. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, like growing up, uh, very, my home of origin was very, you know, dysfunctional. We moved a lot um, and my, my home was kind of like um, something you'd kind of see on TV with, you know, hoarding um, in my fam, in, you know, in my family. So, and as a kid, you know, you don't really have control over that, but, you know, friends, neighborhood, you know, people would, you know, find out by, you know, by seeing yeah. you. Um, and, it, you know, you could get bullied a lot. Um, and that, that was definitely the case when we lived in a small town. Um, so, you know, definitely a lot of bullying. And it was just pretty significant, which I kind of knew, but I didn't grasp the fullness of it until I became an adult. And then we just moved a lot. Like, I think the longest place that I lived in was maybe like three or four years so we just didn't i just didn't have a sense of a real home i guess where it was comfortable it was very not comfortable and and just due to my mom's mental illness it was there was just a lot of loneliness because i was an only child till i was about 10. and you know as you can imagine if your house is like that you can't have friends over you just really can't have friends because you know it's it's impossible <laughs> at that age especially mm -hmm. we didn't have cell phones how has that affected you in adulthood the view of home i mean i think in adulthood i one good thing saving grace is i had my grandmother and she was very strong influence in my life and i my parents were very young when they had me my mom was 19 my dad was 22 so they were very young they were the babies of their family and i don't think they just had the capacity you know, so I lived with my grandmother a lot, probably half the time when I was a baby baby, and then spent a lot of time with her, lived with her for a year when I was 10, when my brother was born. Um, and her home was like the exact opposite. It was like immaculate. It was very, you know, warm and welcoming. And she was just um, an amazing woman. And so I've always wanted to, like patterned myself after her because of that example. But when I was 12, she actually had a stroke and she just became pretty much um, in a vegetative state. And so that really at the age of 12, I kind of lost her. And so that, you know, really impacted me and kind of took me full, there was no, you know, escape at that point. Um, but I always kind of looked at that those experiences and the times that I got to share with her as you know what I wanted ultimately for my life. And so I've always tried to like have that you know within my space. Um, but then as I went into adulthood, 
I was really kind of unstable. I, I would consider myself like unstable in a way that I was kind of moving around from place to place. I, I think I had my own place, you know, from like age of 18, but I just moved around a lot. And then um, meeting my ex-husband, um, we, you know, we moved a lot for some reason. It was just, we moved like every couple of years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but even, you know, in my young adulthood, I would decorate, I would kind of go all out and try to decorate the house. Like I would put these borders, wallpaper borders <laughs> up that I'm like, why did I do that now? But uh, I, I really was into decorating my house. But then I'd say, you know, a few years ago, after a couple more moves and just feeling very unstable in our relationship, I just like quit, you know, and as you can see in here, it's very barren. <laughs> um, and I just was like, what, it's not worth it anymore. So I just, and I just kind of fell into this like depression and like, and so when Victoria contacted me, I was just like, but, you know, I didn't believe her. I, I was like, is this a scam? You know, at first, like, no, your pastor gave me your name. And I, so I messaged my pastor immediately. I was like, did you, do you know anything about this? And then she's like, oh yeah, you're going to, if I, if it's what I think it is, you're going to want to call her back. So I was like, okay, I, I actually can't even conceive of what it might feel like or be like, to be honest with you. So what does home mean to you? I mean, it's just a place of, of like comfort. It's a place of peace. It's a place where you come together as a family. I'm very, very big on family. That's why I have this giant dining room table because I like to eat meals together. I like to cook. Um, and even, you know, I, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri originally. And there, you know, I would try to have like these really big dinners and invite all my friends, all my family, you know, and just cook like a huge meal and just have everyone together. That's my like favorite thing to do. Gathering is what I love. I guess <laughs> if, you, if I could sum it up in a word, is a place to gather. Gathering. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So I met my ex-husband um, and it was kind of like an instant connection. Like the first time that we met, we spent like eight hours together because we met at a coffee shop. Yeah. talked for like three hours then I was like hey do you want to go to dinner you know so we just was a connection and things like moved pretty quickly and I really didn't think that I could have children like I always wanted children from like the time that I was like 13 on I was like I can't wait to have kids you know because I just wanted a family and you know that I didn't have you know growing up and so but by that time I was like 37 and I was like, it's, there's no chance. And he already had kids and we talked about, you know, I was like, if I could have one, that would be great, but I don't think I can. And so since you already have three, it's fine. You know, I can be stepmom. Well, lo and behold, I turned up, you know, pregnant. Um, and it was like unbelievable. And then I, after I had Jada, few years later than had Ayla and just these two girls that I just never thought I was going to have. Shortly after having Ayla, like things were already kind of rocky with us and weird things were happening. But shortly, like eight days after I had Ayla, I, I caught him being unfaithful. Mm -hmm. And that pretty much was the beginning of the end of our relationship. And so we, you know, it, it took a while for the full you know, breakup to happen, but he got a job promotion that required him to move to Dubai. And so he moved there. And at the time, I just didn't think it was a wise decision for us to follow him there. That's when we ended up moving to Florida. And after about, I took a short term lease because I wasn't sure, you know, what I should do, honestly. And my youngest was only eight months old at that point when he moved. And so I, after the short term lease was up, I decided to go ahead and try it, you know, and basically sold everything that I owned and moved to Dubai and just threw caution to the wind big time, thinking I would regret it if I didn't at least try, you know, and that it might be a good experience for the kids and you know after a few months there really almost immediately like I just didn't feel I couldn't trust and I didn't feel comfortable and then having that on top of like you know trying to be make a life in a new country I just realized that you know it, it just wasn't 
gonna work and then you know things came to major things started coming to light again literally you know begging like please you know and he just was in a state of just refusal to like really work on it and so I mean we moved there with like 16 bags you know we took as I took as much as I could physically take um, then we ended up moving back you know and it just really felt like you know I really got a sort of like an immigrant experience you know coming back with almost nothing but our clothes um, and then moved to an Airbnb and luckily the whole time I was working because I, I worked remotely so I was able to work remotely in Dubai um, and then you know just basically from there you know got you know found this house how long ago did you move back to the States um, it was in December or sorry it was in June of 2022 so mm -hmm. when did you move out to Dubai I moved to Dubai in December of 2021. Yeah, I had my daughter June 2020 in the midst of the pandemic. So it's been a very tumultuous, you know, few years, like a lot of life changes, like in very short mm -hmm. periods of time for the kids as well. My young, my youngest stepson, Mansoor, he, he, he moved to Dubai with us and um, like around the same time that we did uh, with his mom. My oldest stepdaughter was here. She was going to University of Florida, which is at Gainesville. And then I had decided, you know, Jacksonville was a good place. I'd done a lot of research and came to visit the area before I moved here. And then Maya, the, the, my stepdaughter that lives with me, she was going to school in St. Louis, where we're from. And she just wasn't doing really well. She came there at like 17 you know, and she was by herself at the time because we were all living in Dubai. And then I said, hey, you know, why don't you just come live here? You know, you're not, you're struggling with your health, you're struggling with your classes, you're struggling with, you know, just that area of St. Louis wasn't the best area where the university was. And so she just came and, and she's been here since um, January, she's been here almost a year, so. And we get along really well, so it, it works out. They're very much, you know, I consider them my children, and I always will, you know. When I first came back, I had major PTSD, mm -hmm. but I didn't know I had PTSD. Mm -hmm. So I would just wake up in the middle of the night, just frozen with fear. And sometimes I would just be like stuck like that for hours, mm -hmm. you know. And so finally my doctor's like, yeah, this is PTSD. You're, you know, I'm like, how is that connected? You know, and then I, you know, realized like, oh, that's connected. So I did start getting on some medication that helped me with that. Um, and then, you know, doing some counseling, but it's still really hard. What would you say was the hardest part when you guys did get a divorce? Honestly, you know, I have to say it was the loss of him. Um, because our relationship was very, like, it, it was very like unstable but we had this really amazing like connection of like friendship and of a mental kind of meeting of of our personalities the way you know w you know beyond the issue that we the major issue that we had you know so I, I think for me it was the loss of him and the loss of you know my kids having really a dad a, you know, a real, you know, what I would consider dad in their life, you know, because now it's all through phone calls and text. <laughs> I honestly don't know if I can handle this emotionally. <laughs> I can't even, I don't, I, I don't even know how it will feel, to be honest with you. How excited are you even to bring your girls into this and give them more of a home and stability? Beyond. Like, it's going to be beyond, you know, like for them, they, they, they deserve that, you know, and they, they've had a rough and they still cry a lot for him. You know, my daughter was just crying last night because she missed him and I brought this bunny to her that he gave to her in Dubai and she was crying because she missed, it made her miss her dad and I'm like, oh. So, you know, not only have they had their own grief, at least we have each other, you know, and I tell them I'm never going to leave you, 
no matter what, you know, and unless, you know, God takes me <laughs> away, you know, I'm never going to leave you and I'm always going to be here. When I came back, you know, they, they ended up finding kind of a reason to um, lay me off, you know, because I moved from St. Louis to here um, and I was always a remote employee, even from 2018, I was a remote employee and so they're basically like no everybody has to come back to the office and you don't live near an office so we're gonna have to lay you off you know and so that was another blow um you know and now I'm coming kind of coming back from that uh, that's why I think 20 with this happening to me and my new job um and I've also in the last year like lost almost 70 pounds because I really ballooned with my weight um, over the last couple of years and so that is something I'm really trying to take control of my health in general so I'm getting there I feel like this is going to be like a really positive year for us what advice would you give yourself at the beginning of when all this started unraveling I think I would probably want to say that it's going to be okay eventually you know even though it doesn't seem like it and I think for me, just because of like the, the things that I grew up with and then coming through this experience, it, it, even though they're very, you know, seemingly disparate situations, very differing in their, the things that were happening, um, it, it, it brought back a lot of things that I didn't realize were there and a feeling of lack of feeling of safety you know, and, you know, I, like, that's why I was having, like, kind of the night terrors and things going on, because I didn't feel safe, and it brought back that feeling of lack of safety when I was a kid, and I didn't even know that I struggled with that, a feeling of that, you know, so I would go back, and I would say, it's going to be okay eventually, and you are safe, you know, you're, you're safe. You know, and that's something that I've learned to even say to myself when that anxiety starts rising or that, you know, feeling of loss starts rising um, is to tell myself, like, you're safe. You're OK. Nobody's hurting you right now. You can't, you know, you're fine. And that that always seems to, like, calm me down, just focusing on that thought. You guys, how did you did you watch it without crying? Because just thinking about it makes me cry. I am so thankful that God put Jamie in our path and that she is our 2024 recipient. I'm so excited about this.